Hi, this is Miss Lavodi, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use Tai Sui Sketches Pro for iPad to create a painting of a reflective object. In this video, you will use your still life of glass objects as a base layer in Tai Sui Sketches Pro. You'll set up your sketch page using the Le Grand block paper texture and select black for your paper color. Once you have your photo layer in, use the gear icon to change the opacity of your photo layer to be more transparent. This is so you can see your brush color and texture over the picture better, but it will make your color look more dull. We're using the old pastel pencil tool and it gives us an oil pastel type texture. Opening Tayasui, you're going to create a new workspace, a new sketch page. So you're going to be clicking um, to get to the ground block paper texture. From here, Set use the three dots in the top black. menu bar. Uh, we and want black the paper down because arrow. in this project, and then select our, your photo uh, from your shadows camera. are going to just be the black of the paper coming through. Bring in your photo, then tap your layers icon. I know that the icons in Taisui are dark and black on top of the black background makes them hard to see. So pinch in your workspace from time to time so you can see your icons for your menu bars and everything. So tap the three stacked pieces of paper on top right hand corner and then hit the gear icon in your picture layer to make it transparent. This will dull the colors a bit. Your colors will look a little bit darker but we want to be able to see the color uh, and texture of the brush tool we're using. So we're going to do that on a separate layer. So we click the new uh, layer icon, which is the plus sign in that rectangle. And that puts a layer right over this image. So you will work in that layer only. Uh, never draw on top of your actual photo layer. One thing you want to check on is click the stylus icon up in the menu bar area on the top of the screen and set your preferences for the color eyedropper tool to be on uh, so that way you'll be able to press and hold the screen with your finger and select color from your reference picture layer. Once you have your old pastel brush tool selected, you can play with the size, but keep the opacity at 100% so the color is solid. You'll start to paint in the shapes of colors you see, and it's as simple as that. So what you'll see me do is I am using the eyedropper feature, and I'm pressing and holding my iPad screen to select the color that's local to the shape that I want to paint inside of. And then I am changing the size of my brush, but keeping the opacity at 100%. And then I'm going to color in that shape with the color that I grabbed from the screen. You're going to continue to work your way around the entire object by painting in the different shapes of colors that you see, pinching and zooming to get as detailed as possible. The more different shapes of colors you put in, the more realistic this piece will look at the end. This section is just a little time lapse of me working on piecing together the different shapes that I see. You can simplify the painting a little bit as well, uh, as much as you would like to. However, again, looking for as many of those different shapes of colors that you can see and putting them in will make this look more realistic at the end. I'm looking for as many little surface details, dots, and ovals uh, that I can add in for texture purposes to help further the idea of seeing a reflective object, seeing all those different shapes of colors coming together, those little thin lines and details make this project look excellent.
If you have background objects, you're going to be painting them in a new layer. You're gonna make sure your new layer is underneath your previous layer. So you're gonna to start to plug in details of that second object. Do, again, do not do it in the same layer that you were working in at the beginning of this project. It's good to periodically check on your work by hiding the picture layer. Use the eye icon in your layers to tap that reference picture layer and it will uh, hide it and you'll get to see what your painting looks like just on the black background. And this will also help you see where there's going to be gaps that you need to fill up or if you forgot a shape, um, <clears throat> you just want to be checking your work. Once your next object was filled in, you want to check both objects and see how uh, you might need to add any extra layers uh, to put under these painted layers to fill in more gaps of color. Putting a layer underneath this will allow you to keep all of those details on the surface and paint behind them to close up your gaps. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add um, another layer uh, underneath this. So I'm making another layer under my object layer and then I'm going to start to fill in my background and any other colors that need to get filled in. Once you've checked all the gaps in your painting and you filled it in, you're going to export your finished painting by using the three dots at the top menu, use the up arrow and save it to your camera roll. Then we're going to bring it into our uh, photo roll app and we're going to edit it. So I'm editing the photo using regular iPad photos app and I'm going to adjust the saturation and brightness of this a little bit. So I'm using that little sundial icon on the left. I'm scrolling down towards the saturation and I'm bringing the color up. Um, anything to make the colors look a little bit more vibrant than they did in Taisui. Again, because in Taisui we were working off of an reference picture with lower opacity, the colors got a little more dull. So you can edit your color after you're done working on the painting. And here we have the finished digital painting.